Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Today is episode 102, and we are going to have a fun Q&A, a little bit of would you rather, and some top fives. So really getting into a little bit of conversation with my beautiful wife and I on would we rather do this or would we rather do that? And then what Morning kind of, <laughs> or what are some of the questions that you as the listener have asked us? Now, before we get into all this fun, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on your favorite platform, give us a review, leave us a comment. You, you can't leave a comment. Leave us you a review on YouTube. on YouTube. Leave us a comment, <laughs> but on your favorite listening platform, leave us a, re a review. We greatly appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and dig into these questions. Do you want to talk about your weekend at all? Did you do anything fun? We could talk about my weekend. Um, what did I do this weekend? Miguel asked us what we did last night and I was like, well, we worked until seven or eight. Alex trained. We ate. We watched some pat clips and went to bed. <laughs> pretty straightforward. <laughs> he was like, oh, pretty typical. Yeah. I was like, oh, yep, that sounded so lame. But M Monday through Wednesday is pretty like routine. Routine. There's yeah. not a whole lot of change. We don't really do anything into the evening. It's uh, the, the work day is pretty long from Monday to Wednesday. And that's just kind of how we prefer it. Mm -hmm. um, but going into our weekend, we, uh, of course, watch football. That's always mm -hmm. our Sunday. Well, not always. It's actually, this is really the last Sunday that we're going to have. Then we have Super Bowl Sunday, not this weekend, but the following. Mm -hmm. um, so times will change. We'll be a little bit more social. We'll go out and do things a little bit more, I'm sure. Um, it's but, nice that football season is during the coldness because then that's when you want to leave your house less. And so it's nice that you can just watch football. And then as the weather starts to get nicer, then it's like, okay. Well, I'll it's hilarious out. that you say that because the season starts when it's not cold. Yeah, but like the brunt of it, like it's been cold out. Yeah, the last couple of weeks for sure. More than um, a couple of weeks. What did we do on Saturday? What did we do on Saturday? I don't know. I worked most of the day. I feel like we did something. We, you worked. Oh, we did, we both did work most of the day. We went and watched the UK game at your parents. Yes, we did do yeah. that. I feel like there was something else, but maybe not. No. We trained together. It was a pretty it was a pretty boring weekend. I've gotten into a really bad habit and uh, of working on the weekends again. It is not my favorite habit to have. It's just how the work has kind of poured over these last couple of weeks. And I notice such a difference when I allow for myself to get back into this habit because I am so much easily, so much more easily irritable mm -hmm. and I'm just not prioritizing myself. And uh, when I am working, I'm slightly resentful at times because I'm having to work. Yeah. And so I've got to get back into the swing and like, you know, today, Tuesday, or today is Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are so pivotal to me being able to have uh, Saturday or Sunday off one of the two days. And so I've just got to have a really good front end of the week and I can get back into sync. And I think this week will allow for me to do that. Yeah. And coming off of, we just had the sleep podcast go live as well as sleep supplement one um, coming out. And we've been trying to get back on our sleep game because not only with some late games for football, but also just some pretty crazy weeks. So over the past few weeks, we've had some later work nights where we normally cut off and we're really good about cutting off at a certain time, but we've been stretching that an hour or two later, getting to bed a little bit later. And uh, I feel like we've been getting back on our our jam, which is just going to set us up to be able to have that time. I can agree. I can agree. Okay. On Sunday, I also went to another degree class. I think How's that's that worth mentioning. It's, you know, it's going, it's a uh, difficult, lots of balance. Um, I definitely do not do the movements as slow as she wants me to. And then she reminds me to go slower and I don't, I don't want to go slower because I'm bracing every single muscle in my body. And that just doesn't seem it. But I went to lunch with my sister at Kona, our favorite, one of our favorite places in town. And that was delicious. And then came home and watched football with you. Excellent Sunday. Mm -hmm. I spent Sunday taking majority of the day off. I worked in the morning, but took yeah. the majority of the day off. Okay. Now that we look at our questions here, would you like to have just a regular question? Would you like to start with Surprise a would me. you rather? Okay. Surprise me. We're going to start with a would you rather, and I would like to start with a little bit of a, a good one here. So would you rather it be an Arizona summer forever or 
an Ohio winter forever. So this is the only climate that you have to live in for eternity. There's a lot of pros and cons to these. Mm. This is hard. Do I get to choose which winter it is in Ohio? The current winter where it's ice on the ice on the pavement and there's lots of snow and you can't get around a whole lot easy. A whole lot easy. Yeah. So like there's a temperature that it just it's always like 15 or 20 degrees or does it warm up at all? No, it does not warm up at all. Well, then that's not a true Ohio winter. I mean, we have like three springs before spring really hits. Okay. Well, I will put more parameters in here. 15 to 20 degrees, icy, snowy, dark all the time, or blazing Arizona heat to where you can't take out your dogs. What do you I don't pick? know. I've always said I'd rather be in cold because you can always put more on, but you can't always take more off. But it's miserable for it to be this dark. But I hate being so hot and I get so swollen. You do. And my like, I want to be able to wear my wedding rings and the dogs want to be able to go outside. Oh, gosh. I don't know what my decision needs to be. I feel like for my mental health, I need to choose the sun. Yep. But... That also might deteriorate my mental health in the long run. But I guess I'm choosing Arizona summer, even though I've literally said I would never live in Arizona in the summertime. If I have to pick and it's my only option, I'm probably picking the Arizona summer. Ugh, I'm going to be so hot. But the, the reality is, is that you're getting lots of vitamin no, D. But listen, then I, I can't wear sweatshirts or sweatpants. I know. It's very tough from a wardrobe stand, standpoint. That's literally my wardrobe. Fashion really gets and hit sweatpants. here. Oh, gosh, I don't know if I'd choose cold now. What? You just said that you wanted to pick Arizona summer. Now you're saying maybe cold? Yeah. Sweatshirts and sweatpants? I have to give those up? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of part of the equation here. I think I'm going to go with Ohio. Wow, I'm going Arizona <laughs> summer for sure. Um, <laughs> next one, would you rather or question? Uh, question. Money is unlimited. What are the first three things that you hire someone to take care of and why? Uh, I hire a private chef that's here at all times because that would save me so much time and make my life so much easier. I would then hire someone to be a house manager immediately, if not sooner. Because what, Detail what a house manager. Yeah, that's manager. what I'm about to get into okay. here. This is something I've thought about, okay? There needs to be a guy to handle all the guys. I thought when people, you know, got older and moved into assisted living, I was like, what is there so much to upkeep within a house? Like, you just like cut the lawn. It's not that big of a deal. But that that ain't it. And I learned being a homeowner that uh, this is a hard job. And there are so many different people you need to be in contact with. And it's a lot. And you always got to be following up because they're not always the best with follow up. So I need a guy to manage all the guys and then just report to me. Okay. So I need that. And then probably just like a personal assistant to just, again, do some stuff for me, organize my day, um, schedule things. I very much dislike scheduling. That is one thing Alex and I really have a hard time because we both dislike scheduling things and we both tend to put things off. But those would be the three people that I would hire right off the bat. I would hire a personal driver immediately. Oh, shocker. I would give up driving in a heartbeat if that was an option for me to give up and just have someone transport me everywhere. So that's number one. Um, I would hire a personal chef that does not also double as my wife uh, because I already kind of have one, but uh, her title is not that. So I'm going to opt for a personal chef just to you know have the the good foods always available and fresh and ready. I mean, who would be against that? The third thing, this one's this one's tough. I think that um, I would want the the personal assistant makes sense, you, right? You need that, like now. Yeah, that would be helpful. Just someone to keep me in in alignment, essentially, kind of keeping me on task and keeping me organized, which would be the personal assistant. Yes. I think would be very useful. Um, also, <laughs> someone so that person would also need to double of things that need to be fixed around the house because one of my biggest downfalls <laughs> is that I just tolerate things that don't work perfectly, but they still work. But that's what the house manager would also do. True. Okay, so I'll take the house manager actually. Because they third. would get everything you know wrapped up. We wouldn't have to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, so it's just like I, I always run into the situation of I just tolerate until it's too 
unbearable. And then I'm like, all right, fine, I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would love to fix that. You know, I think it is important to have kind of like that wish list that you want because it's something to work towards right. and to to look forward to of like, this is something I just like doing. Someone else might find joy in this. Then this might bring them joy. And if not, it's providing a paycheck. So win, 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 I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's next one is going to be a would you rather. Okay. Are you ready? Would you rather be the artist to every song you listen to or have a dog start continuously barking every time you talk? If I'm the artist, is it my voice? Yes, it is your currently? voice. Yes, every time you put your headphones in. It's not just like I'm an artist and all I hear is my music. It's my, like right now, my It's voice. It's your favorite songs, but you're singing the oh, songs gosh. for you to listen to. Okay, I feel like I could train myself to be a better singer, but the barking I cannot do. So I I would choose to be the artist. I would also choose to be the artist. I cannot express what makes my skin on the back <laughs> of my neck crawl more than as soon as I start to try and articulate myself and one of the dogs goes absolutely bonkers yeah. and then they are drowning out my sound. That is something that truly gets under my skin. So I will listen to myself <laughs> sing my favorite songs and I can tell you I am a below average singer. No. You're pretty good. Really? Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, I don't know the last time I heard you like really try to sing. <laughs> it's been to a give minute. You, yeah. I feel like you. I had like uh, solos and I was in choir and all that. I didn't have that. Yeah. But so funny story. Alex used to think that I thought he was a bad singer because I would turn up the music when he started to sing. But it wasn't a Is coincidence. That, okay. No. First, I want to say it wasn't It wasn't that I was turning it up because you were singing. It's I was turning it up and you happened to be singing. But I want to make it very clear. It wasn't because I didn't want to hear you sing. It's because I wanted to be able to sing and not hear my own voice. <laughs> I just want to hear the music. And I'm also hard of hearing, so, you know, got to bump that up. I always thought that the the gesture of turning up the music when someone's singing is, like, the most polite way of, like, you suck at singing. I'm just going to continue to drown you out by turning up the actual song. <laughs> so that was— It was just for myself. <laughs> that was a learning experience on, on my end of things. Um, we're going to come back to the questions here. What was your first car, make and model? And then what is your dream car if you have one? First car— was a, oh, wait, well, okay, I'll say my first, like, true car okay. was a, a Mazda Miata. I loved it, and it was older than I was. It was a 1991 Mazda Miata, and I think it was, like, $3,000 off of Craigslist, and it was a two-seater, and it was a short clutch, and it was the most fun car convertible to have ever, but my first real car, technically, was a Dodge Durango, but that didn't last. Tell very the story. Long. There's no story to tell because there there's nothing that happened other than what everyone already knows what happened. Well, not every listener knows. So go ahead and tell everyone. So there was a situation How where How many days into your license are you as the story? Where unfolds? you still can only have one person in your car. So under 6 months. Yes. Okay. And I was driving and we went to, you know, the rich area of town to go look at the Christmas lights as one does. And I was with my one friend and well, we- I, Hold on, hold on. One one friend or- Yes, I know a Dodge Durango seats nine, but I had one person in the car with okay. me. And I was driving and I was being very irresponsible looking at these lights. I was creeping along. But then I hit a parked car. But I will say the moving ones are harder to hit. Theoretically. So I hit a parked car and then I had to go up because, you know, I can't just hit and run. I had to go up like crying and be like, I literally hit your car. And I have to tell my dad that I just hit someone's car. And I'm this soon into getting my license. And getting my license was a whole fiasco because I got major nerves, which I had never had testing nerves before. And for some reason, I just did. And then the person wasn't even home. So then I had to leave a note <laughs> and then like just wait for them to call me back and not even know what kind of response I was going to get. And then I had to have my dad come and get me, and it was, like, leaking fluid from the car, and we had to edge along, like, 10 miles per hour until we got home. And then my dad restored that car, and we sold it. 
but it was totaled. We went to the junkyard to go get pieces for it. We actually ended up getting, um, fun fact, a Dodge Durango, like the front fender is the same as one of the Dodge trucks. So we were able to grab it off of a truck instead of a Durango and fix it. But yes. Dream car. My dream car. <sighs> I don't even know if I could. I guess as of right now, we're going kind of back in time to that small Mazda Miata. My dream car as of this moment is a Porsche 911. Yeah. That would be nice. 911. A 911. 911. <laughs> <laughs> My first car was a silver Ford Focus SE 2005. It had 110,000 miles when I first got it. Um, I was in love with that car because at the time I was really just committed to having a car that was in relative nature of like not being super old, but still having some features. Cause I could plug in an aux cord to that car. Oh, I was I lit that. about that. I was, that was <laughs> all I cared about was that I could plug in an aux cord. I had the tape that yeah. had the cord on it. <laughs> those never, I feel like those never worked. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was broke. Yeah. I mean, I had like crank windows and you had to use like an actual key to lock it there's no power anything to my car yeah so i had that ford focus se for um a while oh i i ended up having to right so when i was when you and i were dating that car would overheat if it was <laughs> if i was driving it for longer than like an hour and a half yeah. it would just like shut down on me it was like no bro i can only go for so long and so I would borrow my grandmother's car. Mm -hmm. She was not thrilled. She was like, mind you, my grandmother at that time never right. drove, <laughs> literally never drove. She just liked the thought of having the car in the driveway. And she liked looking at her little red car Loved through, it. <laughs> through her window. Loved it. And so when I would go and visit Sue, I would borrow her car that never got driven anyway to go uh, see her. And uh, so at that time, my grandmother's giving me a lot of grief and I saved up enough money and got another car, which was a Mazda 3, mm -hmm. a Mazda 3. And she was ecstatic that now she had her car back in her driveway that she still did Never not drive. <laughs> um, and so that was my whole first car experience. My dream car um, for all of the, the uh, people who are passionate about their cars that are listening, I don't have the specific name. I do love like the Ferrari brand mm -hmm. as a whole. I love a lot of their vehicles. I don't know the specific numbers to the ones that I like the most necessarily. If your dad was here, he'd he be would. like, you like bing, 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 <laughs> and tell me every single one that I like. Um, but that would be, one of those would be counting my dream car. What I about that new um, Ben's? Um, oh, the, the electric, the electric cool one. one. Yeah, with the, the dashboards very cool yeah that one's cool i wouldn't put that as like a dream vehicle yeah. though because um, i could go for the electric g-wagon that's supposed to be coming out that would be cool yeah that'd be very cool are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need well look no further physique development is here to help you we have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again if this sounds great to you then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Okay. Um, the next question here, let's go back to the, the would you rathers. Would you rather pee every time that you stood up or <laughs> poop every time that you sat down? Neither. <laughs> I would rather pee because I would just wear a diaper and then I would pee in the diaper every time I stood up. You could wear the diaper with the poop though. Yeah, then you have to sit in your poop because as soon as you sit down, then you poop and then it's all over you. How much do you poop is the question. I mean, like, is it I a don't little know the parameters listen, of this. Listen, is it a shart or is it more of like, I actually shit myself? Regardless, I would much rather pee <laughs> and it's much rather or much easier to cover that up and to Easily. deal with that yeah. than pooping my pants. W okay, let's now let's remove peeing, peeing yourself every time you uh, stand up. Let's only outcome is you poop yourself every time you sit down. How do you combat the social aspect of every time that you have to sit, you poop yourself? And so <laughs> now you've got to figure out how to not be a complete nuisance in society. I would just stand all of the time. <laughs> Movie they, theater. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, was it on Shark Tank or was it like on a TV show that it was a joke? What if you poop yourself every what time that? you readjust yourself in a seat? So it's like, um, I think it was actually on New Girl where he had like the seat that like popped out of his pants. What remember. was that? 
I think it was New Girl. And I would just do that where it's like kind of like in your pants where you can just like stand and pop a squat so that I'm able to be distanced from people. I'm not getting it on their furniture. I'm not getting it really as much on myself. Uh, so I would I would live the standing life. That would be so, that, honestly, that would be the worst situation. Oh, I love to sit. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. So we're on the same page. I would I would pee every time I stood up for sure. Um, it, even if it was a an unmanageable quantity, I would still take. <laughs> unmanageable. Like if you were to pee a lot, like have to pee like a racehorse every time you stood up, I would still opt for that before I poop myself every time I sit well, down. Yeah, I'm not trying to poop myself. Exactly. We're on the same page. Okay. Um, let's go back to go back to the the questions here. So, what is your biggest pet peeve? Or do you have a top three pet peeve? I, I need to like start writing down my pet peeves because I think of them like when they're happening and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even do this. And then when someone asks me, I'm like, hmm, what are even pet peeves? So do you, if you have one ready, then you can go. <laughs> if not, I will think of one. Pet peeves. So with this, I think that a lot of things of people – doing like a nervous tick when I'm talking mm -hmm. of like tapping their foot or just distractions when I'm trying to speak to someone. It's very annoying to me. That would be one of my pet peeves, one of my bigger ones for sure. Number two pet peeve. Um, talking too loud. I don't love when people are like screaming when it's unnecessary. I, I accidentally raise my voice a little too much sometimes. <laughs> You're only going to identify the ones that are like relative to you and I. But I wouldn't say that that's like my biggest one. Well, I would hope not. And I would say another pet peeve would be like people telling other people how they should live their life type situation mm -hmm. when it doesn't impact them. That is like another one of my biggest pet peeves of, that I do not understand in the sense that when someone is expressing their life or like how they go about things. And then someone, it does not impact at all. They're like, you definitely shouldn't do that. Yeah, That is stupid. You, you're an idiot for wanting to do it that way. It's like, this has no bearing on your life. Just let them live, like mm -hmm. let them be who they are and let them do their thing. So that would be my second one. Um, do you have one yet so that I can? Yes, okay. that's why I was looking at my phone because I thought I had written one down and I couldn't remember if I did. Slow internet. Ooh, slow internet. Big, 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 big pet peeve for me. Yeah. That one really does it for me. Slow internet. Slow internet is a is a tough one. Uh, you you don't realize how much you're using the internet until it's turned off. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm using this for everything. Literally This is everything. impacting everything that I need to do, especially within working from home and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Slow drivers as well. People driving below the speed limit. Yeah. That's real frustrating. Or slow walkers. Like if you're on That's a path me. and then it's just like they're all walking slow and it's like realize other people are walking. You can still walk slow, but like don't make it someone else's issue. But you can also still walk fast. And why are you making it their issue? You can walk around them. No, but what if they're not allowing me to walk around them is what I'm saying. Jump the fence. Jump go, the fence. Go around the side. You'll figure out a way. Oh my if gosh. If it means that much when to you When you're behind a going. slow driver, you literally cannot stop Driving is different. Am I going to ramp over the side? and? But when I said slow driving, you were you didn't say anything. No, I agreed with slow driving. Okay. But walking, you, are, you have all of the tools oh, gosh. to your availability for sure. Okay. All right. Sanitary reasons aside. So put this to the side here. Would you rather have to work out for an hour naked at a public gym or be dropped off two miles from your home while naked and having to make your way home? A hundred percent make my way home. I don't know. I mean, both are pretty tough. I think that I would, I, I mean, have a little bit more dialogue here. I, I've already made my decision. <laughs> I, regardless of sanitary reasons, which you can't just push those aside. That's a fantasy world. There's sanitary well, I mean, issues. This is pretty this is pretty fantasy world here. I don't think that you're gonna be able to walk into a public gym and go train for you an could. hour in the nude. You could. No, I think you that could try. In the you first, might not last an hour, you, but you could you're try. not gonna last more than a minute. You walk yeah. out of that bathroom, you walk in the front door, you're getting shot. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going home, like that happens. You're telling me you can walk into lifetime, 
nude. I'm not saying, I'm saying I don't even want that to be something that even begins. Right. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say that this is all a fantasy world. Well, obviously not. It's saying a fantasy I want to be a part of. I, mean, I would much rather be dropped off. Hey, don't even make it two miles. Make it 10 miles from home. Oh, my gosh. And I'll find my way home naked. Nude. N- naked and afraid. Naked I'll and afraid. I'll make it happen. Would you Would you uh, hitchhike? No. That is so – as a female, Oh, first that's a bad all, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad and just idea. in general, dangerous. Then add in the fact that I'm naked – Absolutely not, because also sanitary issues. I'm not sitting on someone's blanket or towel that's in their car, and I'm definitely not sitting on their seat. What kind of person do you think? If I was to be walking down the street naked, got my thumb out, and they that, stop, that's not the what type kind of person, of person? Yeah, that is not the type of person I what's want to the interact car that, with. What's the car that comes mm-hmm. to mind? I'm picturing a 1978 beat to shit Ford truck with so much stuff in the truck bed and a very very overweight white male in overalls <laughs> that is bald and his entire seat to his side. You know, it's it's just the 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 front seat, right? Mm-hmm. There's no you know, there's no cab. And every there's so much junk. There is oh like so many that's cigarette my nightmare, boxes. Regardless of the fact that I'm naked, that's and, my nightmare. And he rolls down the window and says, Hop in, buddy. And I'm like, this is my only way to get to my destination. But for you, I would feel more safe with that. I'm just saying, I mean, what's the vehicle that you're thinking? I mean, I mean, I don't think it's narrowed down to a certain vehicle or look of a person. I think it's a type of person. Yeah. It's it's not a good person. I yeah. Mean, well, maybe it is a good person. Would you stop for someone if that were in that no, situation? No. I am not stopping for a hitchhiker. <laughs> like, what am I, inviting this person to come in and murder me? Yeah. I don't think I pick up a hitchhiker. Like, I don't, I, I get that you should help people, but you also shouldn't be stupid to your own safety. You shouldn't put yourself at risk just because someone else is in danger. Like, yes, you should be a good Samaritan. And if someone, you know, starts choking on the street, I'll give them the Heimlich. I will give them. Are you them CPR? I will give them CPR. That's someone I'm honestly on the dedicated. street. I've I've thought about this a couple of times. If I see someone choking or not choking, but needing CPR that if, I don't know, that's a tough one. If I felt that I could help in that situation and I was not doing more harm, even though like, well, not for me because I am like both of us are certified in CPR, so we wouldn't get the Good Samaritan rule. But like, if you aren't certified like even if you do harm you are trying to do good so like you're all in the clear but i would really look at can i truly help this person or am i trying to be a hero in this situation and sometimes how, how you can help someone is asking someone else for help and so i would you know call up 911 or whoever i needed to call i'd say hey this person needs some help but i don't i would not stop to get a hitchhiker especially if i was by myself i don't think so either I don't think so either. All right. So the the next question that I that I have for you, uh, I, I thought that we could answer this for for one another. Okay. What is the telltale sign that I am not happy? And then I will answer this for you. <laughs> What's the telltale sign uh, that I am not too chipper or I've got, you know, I'm just irritated with something? I feel like I don't know how to put it into words, but I don't even know what it I just know when you're not happy. Try to articulate it. <laughs> um, when you give really short answers, mm. I would say. Uh, maybe. But like, again, that's context related of sometimes you'll give a short answer and I understand you're not not unhappy or you're not unhappy. You're just answering the question and there's an understanding of that. But when you're just not acting like yourself. I don't know <laughs> when you don't give me a kiss when you walk by me. Wow. So the the telltale that I I know that you're not feeling it is that you're so anyone who knows Sue, her pace of walking is very fast all the time. If she's unhappy, a massive telltale is that paired with that pace is also a stomp <laughs> and she is shaking the house. That is a sign that there's something going on and we've got to address something. Oh my God. Because <laughs> I don't even walk that heavy. Bruh, listen. You just walk like a freaking cat and you scare me. Oh Why are you gosh. trying to creep up on me all of the time? Bruh, I, I just walk normal. I do not just stomp all over the house. It's <laughs> not even not stomping. You're literally like tiptoeing around oh the house. Gosh. Okay, my office is on the main floor. Sue is upstairs. I at all times 
to know exactly where Sue is oh, in the house. Give me a break. She I is, can hear every time you're in the bathroom, everything that you're doing and walking around. That's a little odd. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, there are some places that like you can hear very well above and below. Sometimes. Like I can hear when you're train I can hear when you're talking in the gym. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear when you're training. The garage in the gym. gym is right um below my below office. Sue's office. Yeah. Just for reference. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sue's if you see her stomping, then you know that she's got something to address. <gasps> oh my gosh. Um next one here. Let's go with a let's go with a would you rather. Would you rather now this is your own dietary restrictions aside. You have great digestion, you have no IBS. What a dream life mm -hmm, this would be. Truly. Would you rather be gluten free or dairy free for the rest of your life? I feel like I would say Aside from my own, you know, I'm already dairy free. I think I would say dairy free just because I've gone through like figuring out what has dairy in it and what has gluten in it. But just wait till I finish because it, I feel like it's harder to be gluten free. And especially if you have to be like gluten free as far as like you have celiac, you cannot touch gluten. That makes life extremely difficult. And so dairy free, I feel like where the food industry has progressed to, there's so much like space for people who are dairy free. And like there's things that like going to a restaurant, I can be like, I just don't want the cheese on the burger. And it's like, okay, now that's dairy free versus like, I don't want to just eat a bun or a burger without a bun because they don't have a gluten free bun or like their fries aren't gluten free. And then that would be really hard as a whole. And like sourdough bread, I couldn't have, you know, Jeff Ruby sourdough bread. That would be difficult as well. I would probably pick dairy free as well. Uh, I, this was actually a question that Nick Comedina post on his or posted on his story the other day, and it it you know had me thinking for a little bit. I went through all the options and things that I would have to give up and the things that I would be able to uh, keep if I had to go that route because I'm very fortunate within my digestion to where both of these things aren't super inflammatory to my gut, and so I count my lucky stars. I, I'm not you know taking that for granted, um, but I think that I would have to go dairy free because I agree with you that being completely gluten free is not an easy pursuit. Like mm -hmm. you have to be you have to be so cautious all the time, and you have to be so diligent. Like you do still have to be with dairy. Of course. Like I'm always reading labels before I have them or looking at menus to see what's in something. And again, thankfully, there's so much variety now of like when you go out to eat, it'll be like this is vegan or this is gluten free or this is vegetarian. And you can have options within that or you can make it dairy free by doing X, Y and Z. And again, the snack food industry has really changed. But as a whole, I think it's easier to be dairy free than gluten free. I agree. Okay. Why don't you pick one and you figure out what, uh, which one you would like to ask, whether that's a question or that's a, would you rather, or a top five that we have available. Um, would you rather have a full blown mustache for the next year or a Bigfoot type hairy legs? This is kind of a, a silly question to me. I would, I would love, I would love to have a full mustache. Oh my gosh. I know. This one was like, as I read it, I was like, I mean, you want a mustache. So I would love to have just a full, beautiful mustache. If I was to shave my entire beard and just have my mustache, you guys would be so offended, honestly. I would, I would look tell ridiculous. you not to do that. I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> like my dad growing up, he has the, a thick mustache. Even now, it's it's pretty gray and white now. But when we were younger, it was such a dense, deep, like yeah. black. Like a Tom Selleck, like thick mustache. Yeah. And I did not get those jeans. I think I got my mom's facial hair jeans, whatever that <laughs> means. <laughs> oh so which gosh. one would you pick? Um, since this one isn't fair, I don't think I need to pick an answer. What do you mean? I mean, that's something that you would like. That's like asking me, would you rather never have to shave your legs again or have a big mustache? I'd be like, oh, never have to shave my legs again. Okay, we'll just answer the question. Except, but that's not what the question is. Do you want super hairy legs or do you want a stash, bro? Oh, I'll take super hairy legs. Super hairy legs. Yeah. And just pack them into leggings or what? I mean, I wear sweatpants the majority of the time anyways. That's true. That's true. The and stash baggy is cool jeans though. Are on, on I think you could pull it off. I think we, you want to kiss me with a mustache? I got a stash. Would you want to kiss me with a mustache? If if my only two options are you having 
Bigfoot type hairy legs or you have a stash, I think that I will tolerate the stash. Do I get to shave? I don't th- I don't think so. I think that you're permanent with these Bigfoot hairy legs. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm solid with my decision. <laughs> okay, what's next? What I can answer this for you. What is the most irrational superstition that you have? I used to be superstitious. Uh, now super, you're only super. a little stitious. I, I've given up on a lot of my superstitions. What made you give up on your superstition? Reality. <laughs> Reality has taught me that sup- being as superstitious as I once was is not necessary. Now, the superstition that was built into my body and just ingrained into mm-hmm. me was stemming from baseball. Mm-hmm. Baseball brings a lot of superstitions and a lot of just if this happens, then this happens. And if you, do, if you don't do this, then this is going to happen type situation. So one of the biggest ones is that Sue and I did not split anything. Like I, when I say split, like when we're walking on a <laughs> sidewalk, if there is a post, we're walking on the same side. Or a trash can. Or, or a trash can. We are not splitting. This is this was this was good. This was kind of like a, a flirtatious thing on my end that I found to be fun, but I definitely believed. Mm-hmm. Um, but also something that we kept up with for quite some time. Like years. Yeah. That we didn't split anything. We pitched that. Um there was a lot of superstitious things within sports as well. So like for Packers games, I would wear the same article of clothing. Um, as, as, as they, they won. won, as long as they won. And then if they lost, I would not wear that article of clothing again for that entire season. And in that time frame, while Sue and I have been together, the Packers were winning a lot of games. And last, this year, this year was a time in which if I was to not wear the article <laughs> of clothing again, I would have had to buy so much more Packers oh my stuff. Gosh. And this literally extended to other people that we were with that he would say, oh, places oh, that you, I was sitting, you can't wear that again, or they're not doing good this quarter. You have to switch spots with me. Um, you were upstairs and they were doing better. Go back upstairs. And it's like, mm, I don't know about that one. I, I fully believed it. I've Reality has set in for me and I have realized that this is not you know, I'm not contributing to the uh, what's happening on the field. You know, in you don't Ohio, think you're contributing. Not as much as I once did. I still think <laughs> that I have a small, small role. They're, they've got uh, the the energy of the universe is somehow taking my energy uh-huh. and sending it their way, but um, at a much smaller magnitude than I once believed. I don't feel like I have any superstitions. None. Well, what are they? All of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but you just said we gave up the clothing one and we gave up the splitting one. We did. So what else do I got? Um. I don't feel like I have like a lucky sock, a lucky like thing. I have to like keep a pattern. And I think it's because I maybe at one point did that and then realized it was like putting so many restrictions on me of like not believing that I had the like ability to change that. Um, It was dependent on something Yeah, it was dependent. And then it was like, oh, you have to do this pattern of things. And it's like, if you forget, then it's making me a little bit, you know, so- I don't feel like I have any super superstitions. That's good for you, honestly. It's more of a detriment to life than a positive. So. <laughs> what do you consider to be your personal calling in life? My personal calling. This is a good question. This is the deepest question that we've gotten <laughs> to. Everything is pretty humorous and, and surface level. This one gets a little bit deeper, I feel like. Um, from a personal calling standpoint, I would say that I have a calling to communicate and, and educate bringing people together. I think that those like three things intertwine. And I think that the, uh, the avenue that I've had the opportunity to, to venture into and to, uh, do those three things has been fitness. Mm -hmm. And I think that it could have, you know, in other stages of my life, it was sports related. And I had a, a great ability and a great desire to just bring people together, to create community, to, um, have strong bonds with other individuals. And now that has, has, uh, transferred into fitness. And so I would say that those are my biggest callings, if you will, or things that I feel compelled that I have a ability or a talent to share with the world. And so those would be my things. Yeah. Well, I agree with those things. And I think that even breaking down as far as like you feel like you should share those with the world, like what goes through your head when you're thinking, because I feel like people get lost within like what their purpose is or what their calling is. What does it feel like to you to truly feel like you have something that you have to share with other people? Hmm. I think that it is multifactorial. The first thing is going to be a matter of, I feel 
really good and I feel aligned with myself when I'm doing these things. I feel um, confident in doing them. And when I'm working to improve them, I am excited about it. And so those would be the things that I would say is the, the first part of it. The second part is receiving feedback from other individuals. Like I would say one of the more common things that I receive from a feedback perspective is that I've had this told to me a number of times, but this is the first time that it's clicked. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that this has made sense to me and you make it so easy to digest. And that's something that I really, I, I love to receive that feedback because especially in the realm of, of fitness, there can be so much complexity that is put into what can be very simple things. And the complexity and the confusion and individuals feeling lesser than or, or not intelligent enough to grasp them is a big deterrent from people just achieving some of these very small acts. And so by being able to provide a way for it to be easily digestible and something that makes it so much easier for the person to just grasp and understand is such a powerful thing. And receiving that feedback makes me feel amazing. And so I would say that those two things, and, and it, it's not just in fitness, like I said, I think that there's a lot of things within sports when I was growing up and, and um, how, you know, just other aspects within my life that align with these things being my my calling or things that I have things to share with the world type scenario. And so, yeah, I would say those things. Yeah. I think for myself, as far as my personal calling, it's in the same vein of just, I feel like I have a calling to make an impact in some way. And I'm very fortunate that it was a passion that turned into how I was supposed to make an impact. Uh, because if you don't know, I my degree and what I went to college for and what my plan was to, was to be a reporter. And I was in broadcast journalism and that was the goal. And then I fell in love with fitness after trying to start my fitness journey so many times before and just trying to lose weight and like like the way that I looked and then just fell in love with fitness and figuring it out. And from when I fell in love with that, I remember saying like my mission is to like teach people about their bodies because I felt so lost and so confused and just didn't understand any of it. And once I did, it was like, other people need to feel this. Other people need to understand this. Other people need to be able to like know themselves so that they're not stuck in this perpetual loop because I was stuck in this loop of like crash dieting and just trying to be what someone else wanted instead of actually learning about my body and what its, its needs were. And that also became a vehicle for me to improve when it came to like my mentality and my mindset and my personal growth. And so I feel like I want to share that just because it's made such an impact in my life that I want to be able to make an impact impact in other people's lives, but for them to have that same impact in their own life. I, I think it's just like a really special feeling of like, as Alex jokes that I'll cut like free promos for places. It's because if like I've found something that like I like and I'm excited about, I want other people to know. And that's always been kind of my personality as a whole. And so I feel like I, my calling is to be able to to make an impact and to, to change lives as a whole. I can agree with you. One thing that I would add to this, and I think that you're blossoming into this a ton and it scares the shit out of you, <laughs> is that a big part of your purpose as well is to lead. You are a very talented and able and capable leader and you have so many uh, features and, and abilities that align with that. And you are, are like, I, I believe that you're meant to do that. Like that is really a, a part of your calling. And right now you're in a transition phase where it is time for you to lead more and for you to have more of a leadership role as a whole. And it's scary. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's scary. And, but I, I think that you're the, the perfect person to, to take it on. And as you continue to believe more in yourself and believe that you deserve to have that leadership role and to uh, be in that role, 
I think that this just continues to feel more and more in alignment with you. And I think that part of why it's so scary is that it is like what you're capable of is so high from this leadership role. And that's why it seems so scary because of what you're capable of is so much that it's just so daunting. And you yourself see yourself at a place where it's not even to what you're capable of. And so it's daunting at the moment. Well, thank you. It is very daunting and scary, but I very much so appreciate it and always appreciate your support and love and just always building me up as a human being. I love you. I love you. <laughs> well, that was definitely the deepest question there, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about a dream vacation that we'd like to go on. Where's your dream place right now? I, <clears throat> you do a uh... You do a much better job of like knowing the places <laughs> per se. I know that, so I'm big on Airbnb in terms of, I love being on Airbnb and trying <laughs> to find the perfect spots. Yes. I love finding the perfect kind of like, I don't know if it's necessarily a steal, but just a good spot on <laughs> yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, it's not a steal. Yeah, I'm not much for the bargain, but I'm more for the quality of the place. <laughs> the experience. The experience of it and, and the comfort of it all and those different factors. So I have a Airbnb that I have saved right now. So if any of you are wanting to go to Lake Como, Oh, that's where I want to go. <laughs> I have an Airbnb that is amazing that I have had bookmarked for forever for it us to is. go to. I'm remembering it now and it is so nice. It's so nice. And um, so that is always like when I think of this question, I go immediately to that Airbnb because I want to go to it so bad. Yeah, um, we will go to it. And I'm excited because it's something that probably won't happen like this year, but it's something that when we do go, it's going to be such a fun experience because we're going to be able to go and do it the way that we want to do it mm -hmm. of like how we want to take that vacation. And it's going to be stellar when we do. But I would say, yeah, Lake Como or Greece are places that I want to go as far as out of the country um, because I we've been out of the country before, but I haven't necessarily been over to Europe. No, not necessarily. I haven't been over to Europe. Um, and I would like to go over that way, um, specifically Lake Como and Greece, which I do want to say, as you were talking, I realized that I answered wrong to one of these questions. And it was a question of if money is unlimited, what do I hire? I hire somebody to have a private jet. Like, oh, yeah. Why would... did I not say that? I really am like questioning where my priorities are. I was only thinking like in the house. Same, was, th same here. And but then that... as you were talking, I was like, what? I want a private jet. Yeah. I want to have that yeah. in my life. I can agree with that. So I apologize for lying earlier. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. All right, last question and then top fives. Are you ready? What is the most wild request that you've ever received from an inquiring client? <laughs> so I don't know if you remember this. This is at the old house. Okay. I had an inquiring client ask if I would be willing to get on a flight once a month to come and train her in person. I do remember Do you this. remember this? Yes. So this individual, we're having, I'm going over my online service as a whole. And she's like, this all sounds great, but I want more than this. And I was like, well, this is, this is what I offer. Like, I, I don't know what else I can give you. And she said, I have an idea. And she said, I would actually like for you to come train me in person. And at that point, I was like, this is wild. I'm going to go ahead and entertain this. Uh -huh. So then I said, okay, how do you see that working out? She said, I would pay for your flights to come here. <clears throat> I would pay for your stay while you're here. And you would train me one week out of the month, every month. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that's going to work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and she was very persistent, followed up many a times, changed what she was going to pay me many a times. Um, I want to say that at the time my service was maybe 400 or 450 or $500 a month. She offered to pay me $5,000 a month oh and gosh. to fly me out and do all that. And I still opted to not do that. <laughs> I can't imagine being away from home one week a month, every month, and just at this person's disposal 
whenever she needed me type situation. Yeah. It was a very interesting request. I've never had anything. That was a one-time situation and never got it again. But uh, yeah, that was my wildest request that I've gotten from an inquiring client. I think I was asked once if we were going to be FaceTiming through all of their training sessions oh, yeah, for yeah. them to, for me to like see them training. And I said, that is not the case. I will not be FaceTiming you every training session. I believe that you can do your training sessions and get me some videos for sure. But I do not need to FaceTime you throughout your session. I have had, cl I've had one client who thought that sending training videos was her sending her entire training session. Oh, I and she would literally send like hour long. Yes, I would have steps. like six or seven hours uploaded of training in her- Not trimmed at all. Literally not trimmed. all the way through. Literally her with a camera and a tripod. She started it from her warm up and just carried it around to each station of the gym with no cuts. And I had to continue to remind her of like, this is not what I'm asking for. <laughs> One, I can't view this. Like I can't even download this to my computer because <laughs> it's like taking up too much storage and I can't even look at it. Yeah. And she's like, okay, I'll chop it. And then she would chop it to the entire session just with like the bits and pieces out. I'm like, this still is not what I'm asking for. <laughs> it's very interesting. I, I have a, I mean, maybe one of these days we have an episode where we just go through some of the wild client wild situations client that we've stories. had over the last, you know, greater portion of the last decade, but- <laughs> All right, and to top five. So what are your top five artists for your training music? Top five artists for training. I'm big into rap. Big into rap. So my list starts with Lil Baby. Lil Baby or Lil, Dub Baby? No, Lil Baby. Dub Baby used to be in the list, but he hasn't really been hitting for me lately. Okay. Lil Baby, Lil Durk. I go back and forth. My third, maybe Meek Mill. Okay. J. Cole. And then shout out to Cody Hobbs, really Davey Hobbs, and introducing me at the age of six or seven years old to Jay-Z. <laughs> and a lot of Jay-Z's old music, like Black Album and those different albums, being hitters for me still to this day. So I have to put Jay-Z in there because of Davey Hobbs. No Young Thug? Young Thug could, it, Meek Mill and Young Thug could flip okay, flop. Okay. So um, hopefully, you know, Young Thug continues to make music. Who knows what his, uh, <laughs> you know, prison situation is at this moment. Uh, I guess if, you know, what the cool kids are saying, free Young Thug. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't checked out his Tiny Desk concert, it's pretty that good. one's pretty good. Yeah. What um, would you say? What are your top five artists for training? So I'm a little bit less hardcore than Alex when I'm training. And I sometimes do go back and forth. I used to, when we met, I used to listen to like slow music when I trained. And yes. I have transitioned mostly away from that. But I will add Mike to this list. Okay. So especially, you know, the, the garage doors are open. It's a nice day. Feel good. I'm training. Or if, again, I'm like already in it as far as training and I don't need the music to push me, I can throw some mic on and just have some feel good music. But I do like Russ a lot when I'm training. And especially now I go in and out of phases as far as who I like for training specifically. But Russ, I go in there. Um, then John Keith, I just found him because our Spotify wasn't working and we had to use Pandora. And there were some bangers on there for training music um j cole or like kendrick both yeah. both good ones there and then sometimes uh rex but more because his some of his music it's hard because like Re russ and rex have like slow music and then they have more hardcore music and so you can't just throw on a russ playlist because then you're getting a real mixed bag of music so it's got to be kind of targeted one way or the other. What are your top five favorite movies of all time? You know, it's really difficult when you come from like a movie family because I've watched more movies than I can even express. I I mean, my dad is a movie person and that's what we did was watch a lot of movies. 
I watched almost no movies growing up. So this is we have this is one of the things that as we got married, we realized like polars yes. on for sure. And I have such a hard time like answering what my favorite movie is just because there's so many movies. I just can't even decide. So I always give kind of a cop out answer of my favorite movies are Christmas movies because there holds a lot of like memories in those. So I feel good about saying those are my favorite movies. Um, so it's a wonderful life. Muppets Christmas Carol um, and White Christmas are at the top of that. We both have a mutual love for Space Jam. Um, like Mike was a big part of my childhood and I really enjoyed it. But I thought I would throw in a little bit of a more recent movie. Well, it's not even that recent, but more recent. Interstellar. That, you know, just. It's a fantastic movie. Boom. My mind. I could watch it again and find something new each time. Yeah. Crazy. My top five favorite movies are, I'm going to shorten the list to two because I don't really have like favorite, I guess I love Like Mike, mm -hmm. but my favorite movie of all time. And, and I feel like when this question comes up of all time, you always go back to what you liked as a child and that being like the most nostalgic of, yes, that was the best. So Space Jam, number one, I used to watch Space Jam every single day. Two things about me that you will find very interesting. And my mom is a very committed mother is that, um, I would watch Space Jam every day and I would wear my Michael Jordan jersey every day. How I would be grounded is that my mom would not wash or give me my Michael Jordan jersey to wear that day. <laughs> was very distraught that I could not wear it. And so Space Jam holds a very near and dear place in my heart. I Am Legend is a movie <laughs> <laughs> that I am weirdly obsessed with. I don't know. I don't know. It's such a good movie to me. Yeah. I love it. it. Like every single time I watch it, I'm like, this is an amazing movie. Another movie that was amazing as I was a child and I rewatched it as an adult and it sucked <laughs> is Dumb and Dumber. And I thought Dumb and Dumber we was- We need to clip that, please. That he just said that sucked. <laughs> I thought Dumb and Dumber was one of the funniest movies ever growing Comedic up. Comedic masterpiece to Alex. I thought it was so funny. And- uh I watched, I kept telling Sue, Sue had never seen it. And I kept saying, we've got to watch it. We got to watch it. We got to watch it. She finally gives in and says she's going to watch it. We get about 30 minutes into this movie. And I'm like, geez, this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only laughing because I like when we're watching it, I'm only laughing at the things because I remember laughing so hard as a mm -hmm. kid. And you're having all the memories <clears throat> and like the, just you laughing at how you found that funny. Mm -hmm. And, but then you're like, this really isn't that funny as an adult. Yeah. So uh, you felt the same way with was it liar 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 liar. I thought liar liar was hilarious as a child, and then we watched it as an adult, and I was like, oh, this is not as funny. Um, I loved like Bruce Almighty. I loved all those you know type of movies. I will say that I love almost like any movie Will Smith is in. Like yeah. we've done like Will Smith marathons of just like his movies because they are so good. What was the one about uh, Serena Williams and Oh King Richard? That one's very really good. good. If Such you a good have movie. not seen it, would highly recommend. That one's V good. All right. What were your top five athletes of all time? This one is so hard. <laughs> this one's so hard. I have so many athletes that I love. But first, I do need to take a side note of, you know, that jersey he's talking about. So Michael Jordan, number 23, everyone's Jordan year. So we, Alex and I are dating. We well, no, start no, not my Jordan. It was my golden year because my birthday is November 23rd. And then it was my 23rd birthday. Yeah, but people call it like their Jordan year. Okay. But like it was also your golden year. Yeah, because I'm a dog. Your golden birthday or whatever it's called. Whatever. But people are like, ooh, 23, it's my Jordan year. And you, we were just, we had date, I don't even know if we were engaged. Maybe no. we were. And it's Alex's 23rd birthday and he's at home and he takes a picture holding up this little baby 23 my jersey. My mom was very excited about and this, And he's way. like posting it on Instagram and he's like, 23. And all the comments are, oh, I thought this was a baby announcement. And I'm like, sir, why don't we think this through? This literally looks like a baby announcement right now. No, it was what it was intended to be. <laughs> okay, back to my top five favorite athletes. Um, <clears throat> like I said, this is a tough one. I have a lot of athletes that I have adored over the years. And so number one is going to be Michael Jordan. I was obsessed, still am obsessed with Michael Jordan as a whole. And uh, number two is going to be Brett Favre. Now- in the current time, Brett Favre is not looked at. Guys, this is Brett Favre's biggest <laughs> fan. Literally, I, I would get, so growing up, being a Packers fan, I did not have very many jerseys. 
And so, but as you grow, obviously you grow out of the jerseys. I just continued to replace my Brett Favre jersey. And so I was a massive Brett Favre fan. It would be very hard for me. I don't love, you know, what he's doing right now. I would not say <laughs> that. You're not I, a fan of stealing <laughs> no, from welfare? I do not condone oh. what he is getting himself into at this time of his life. When he was playing in the NFL, loved him. Childhood dearly. hero. Childhood hero. Love him. And when I got my first Packers jersey, we were trying to figure out who I should it get. It had to be a Brett Favre and jersey. And he was like, well, it's timeless. It has to be a Favre jersey. And, and now it's not quite timeless. No, I didn't that feel timeless comfortable isn't. wearing it to a game. <laughs> and then my third one is my favorite at the moment, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron. Oh, man. Aaron Rodgers. I love him as a I human. I love Aaron Rodgers. I think that we would be fantastic friends. I'm his biggest fan. Ayahuasca, all the things. <laughs> <laughs> I love him through and through. Yeah. And so, you know, he comes and visits AJ Hawk. I'm just hoping that AJ Hawk's in the area, maybe cross paths, maybe see him at a speakeasy, just something simple. Yeah. Introduce myself. I already have kind of some things mapped out in my mind that I'm going to say. And because I, if I don't have those things mapped out, I'm I'm done. I'm then not speaking. Your only chance is just be like, hi. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And, oh! and you can't just say something about football because then it's just like, oh, it's another oh, fan. Oh, just another stupid and it's fan. Like, I'm not just a fan. Like, I'm your friend. No, bro. <laughs> I have loved you since I was like 11. Okay. <laughs> I remember arguing with my dad when it was time for Brett to step away and it was time for Aaron to shine. I remember arguing with my dad. It was like, it's Aaron's time, dad. I've literally heard this story for years. As you should. It's a very good story. <laughs> my third one. This one, this one's tough because now we're getting into a, or no, I'm already on four. Mm -hmm. I love Devonte Adams. I'm so sad he's not a Packer, but I still root for him heavily as a Raider. So Devonte, cool he's the coolest. He's such a cool between guy. him and OBJ, like the coolest people yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. And then I have to throw in one baseball player, and I would say my favorite baseball player is Bryce Harper. So I grew up. Bryce Harper's the superstar when I'm in, I guess, middle school high school time and yeah always loved him so bryce harper all right well this was um a little bit difficult for me to kind of spread my allegiances with sports and kind of figure things out but i will say one of my favorite athletes of all time is deon sanders neon deon prime time i mean i'm all about it let's freaking go i love it deon sanders then of course aaron Rodgers. i mean we're besties. He doesn't know it. I literally have, you know, the Pat McAfee shirt that says, is it Tuesday yet? And it has Aaron, AJ, and Pat on it. And I wear it every Tuesday before we wait because we care about each other as spouses and we don't watch clips before evening time where we sit down and watch Aaron Rodgers Tuesday every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Devontae Adams 100% makes that. I was so sad to see him go. I was pouting that whole day. I remember we were at my parents' old house and my dad was like, did you hear about Devante? And I was like, literally, why are you trying to bring me down right now? I'm in denial right this second. And I love Devante Adams, which also brings me to my next person, which is OBJ, because he is one of the coolest person people in the NFL. When you just think of cool, you think of Devante Adams or OBJ. They're cool guys. And then I got to throw in some Kentucky boys here. So I would go with, you know, DeMarcus Cousins or Rondo. Love, love Rondo. Who can't love Rondo? A lot of people because he's pretty inflammatory too. Well, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> you know, you have Brett Favre as one of your favorite athletes. I'm allowed to have Brett Rondo. is the best, okay? <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. I'm allowed to have Rondo. Okay? Well, I'm allowed to have Brett, okay? All right. What are your top five Alani New? energy drink flavors. I will say before I get into this list that there's no other way to go about this list. Watermelon oh. Wave. Mimosa. I know mimosa is not really a fave for a lot of people, but I enjoy the light flavoring of this one because all their other flavors are pretty, pretty like big time, you know? So it's nice to have something a little bit lighter. My third, Witch's Brew. Fourth, Breezeberry. And fifth, this one's uh, finding a fifth one. So those four I like all the time, right? This fifth one is can be a little bit too much flavor for me at times. And this one is red slush. All five of those flavors are fantastic. Um, you do not enjoy carbonated beverages. 
I do not. This is where I have major FOMO is I do not like carbonation. And then I cannot have sucralose because of my digestion personally. So I have major FOMO and every once in a while, I'll just take a sip so I can know what people are talking about. So I don't feel so left out. Do you have a favorite can of a lot of energy? Oh, the look of a can? Hmm. I think that the Addison Ray can of, was it cherry cola or? I don't know what that one's called. Whatever, cherry pop, something, pop, I don't know. That one is a really, really cool can, as well as the new peach can. Yeah, the super new peach duper can is so cool. cool. Um, the newest design of the Witch's Brew is sick. Yeah, that is sick. I, I just, the first can that came to mind was the, the Addison Ray one. So mm. I would say that one's like the coolest look. That's mm. Katie's favorite flavor. Yeah. So, you know, it's got to be count, counting for something. This will be our last one, and this is the last top five. And this is one I, if you guys haven't tuned in this far, I don't know what your deal is. Cause this is a very important question that you all should hear. Sue is the snack, snack connoisseur. Sue is the snack connoisseur. And you guys need to hear what these top five snacks are because this will help your day to day. I have been converted off of all of my previous enjoyable snacks onto much better for me and better tasting snacks. She'll want that clipped as well. I will want that clip, David. <laughs> and tell the people, what are your top five favorite snacks? Okay. When I was making this, I was thinking about this. I really wanted to think about what are the ones I've reached for the most consistently. If you have other snack questions, then just slide into my DMs. I will help you out. Or I do have a highlight on Instagram just talking about my favorite snacks. But my most frequent snacks and ones that I would be like really sad on a day-to-day -day basis that I didn't have. Number one, it's going to be rice cakes. Quaker rice cakes specifically. Love them. Rice cakes. Next up, and this is my all-time favorite snack from childhood and beyond, it's popcorn. But not just popcorn in general. I love me some microwave popcorn, but lesser evil popcorn I mean, it slaps. It slaps. They got this like pink uh, sea salt flavor, just, you know, a nice Himalayan pink sea salt. It's great. Just good to go. They have a Himalayan gold that's more of a butter flavor. Uh, it's all dairy free, which is incredible. They have a Himalayan sweetness that is just so addictive. So, you know, lesser evil popcorn, incredible. And then chocolate. I'm a chocolate gal. Always got to have chocolate within my day, a piece of chocolate you know, a square of chocolate, whatever it may be. And Hue chocolate is it for me because it's also dairy-free and so, so delicious. And they have like gems and then they also have bars and the bars like the um, vanilla crunch one is kind of like a crunch bar, but it's more dark chocolate and it's just so, so good. And then fruit in general, love fruit. Raspberries and bananas would be my two favorite. And then these fruit rolls that I've been eating a lot, which have just been so nice when you need something a little sweet, but you're not wanting like candy candy and you're needing a little bit of carbs, being able to have these fruit rolls. And they're from a brand called Bear and you can get them actually at a lot of grocery stores. So I won't list them all, but those would be my top five snacks that I want to have on a daily basis. I can't believe that Nash bars didn't make the list. Well, I was thinking of <clears throat> snack. I thought that that might like fall into like protein bars as a whole. Okay. Well, what are your top three protein bars? Number one is going to be Nash bars. Number two, midday squares. So good. Number three, Nugo bars. Those are the only protein bars you really need in your life at all. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> that concludes. You didn't even give your snacks. Oh, okay. Um, you my can snacks? even say what your prior snacks used to be and how life has changed. Well, I used to you. eat like a child. So <laughs> my prior snacks used to be Pop-Tarts and I don't even know what, what were my other snacks. I, a child's Yeah. Snacks. I mean, whatever you would feed a four or five-year-old. Goldfish. I also, yeah. Cheese. Like at the grocery store, they would say something about like me being a good mom for like the food I was buying. And I just, you know, kept my mouth shut. I was like, I'm this is my for husband. my husband. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I eat more like a, what would you consider your health snack choices? See, you call them health snacks. And I think that gives them just a poor connotation. It's just like, they're still snacks they're good for you. They're better for you. And yeah, they match your taste buds now. Yeah, but they're they're would you put them in a category of bougie snacks? 
There, there's difficulty to attaining them. So I would say, yeah, some of them. There's, there's to them. Uh, some difficulty. Like I can go to every gas station on the planet and get a bag of Cheez Its. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're talking that that easy, then yeah, these are harder. Right. So to these, get. yeah, they're a little bit more bougie. So we could put bougie in front of there yeah. instead of healthy. How about that? Okay. Um, so my my snacks have changed. I would say I love Nash bars. Nash love. bars and midday squares are two of my favorites. I grab those every day. Um, I'm off of Nugo bars right this moment. I've, I went through a spell of just not having good bars. Like you, you can just get a bad box sometimes. Yeah. And so I had a couple of bad bars and I just haven't gone back to them yet. I mean, after two years of having at least one every day, if not two right. for years. Yeah. So it's fair to, you know, transition. Right. And I, and I burn myself out on all foods. So don't be uh, feeling like it's not good because now I don't like it because I do that to every single food. Mm -hmm. um, other snacks that I enjoy... I, what are the, uh, what's the cereals that I've been eating? Um, cinnamon grams. Cinnamon grams. The oatmeal squares and. I would say the cinnamon squares and are the, the cinnamon, what was it? Grams. Oh, the cinnamon grams and the oatmeal squares have been my, my go-tos. Um, so that, that is my snack. And the honey repertoire. checks. And the honey checks. Yeah. There we go. So those are my favorite snacks. But that now concludes our Q and A. Would you rather? Would you rather? And top five. And top five. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did not already, go ahead and leave us a comment, subscribe, like the video, leave us a review. We appreciate you guys abundantly, and have an awesome day. Bye.